Egyptian police have arrested three suspected al-Qaeda militants allegedly planning a suicide attack on a Western embassy. According to the country's interior minister, about 10 kilograms of explosive material have been found. Police have also found a computer with files containing information on bomb making and a flash memory with instructions on how to build rockets. It's not known which embassy may have been a target, but it's believed the plot was in its final stages. The three suspects were apparently in contact with another militant group in the Sinai Peninsula. They had planned a suicide attack that was about to happen against one of the foreign embassies of the nation. They recommended a man named Mohammed Mustafa Ibrahim to do this suicide attack. On their path to do this attack, they bought 10 kilograms of ammonium nitrate, which is used to manufacture explosives and to test explosives. This would have enabled them to make car explosives or remote detonation. Joining us now with more on the story is Adel Mahruki in Cairo. Adel, can you give us more details on the arrests and this foiled embassy terror plot? Well, um, the Interior Ministry said they had intel about this specific group and uh, when they entered their apartment, um, they were able to uh, take in custody three computers uh, and the explosive themselves. And when they investigated uh, and searched the information on these computers, they found uh, information showing them how to build explosives and using them in a specific way using the ammonium nitride that he mentioned that the, for, the interior ministry uh, mentioned uh, they also found links between these uh, three people uh, or that cell and what is known in egypt as the medinat nasr cell which was already a proven cell uh, that has proof and link ties to al-qaeda uh, itself um, so far uh, we the, the interior ministry refused to indicate which foreign embassy was a target but also it was indicated that they also targeted another uh, high secure uh, areas in Egypt uh, without giving any more specification so they are in custody now investigations will be held he said that some of them have uh, already confessed to these uh, charges and they are the ones who give him the information of the candidate that should have uh, made the suicide attack within the next days now, Adel, moving away from those arrests, another major development in Cairo is the start of the retrial of ousted President Hosni Mubarak. Can you fill us in on the court proceedings thus far? Well, uh, the court uh, was a procedural session today. It basically discussed a lot of things, but all of it is just a preparation for the real trial or the real hearing that will be held in June 8th. Um, today, uh, there were some challenges for the judge to maintain his authority over the civil rights lawyers who have always shown uh, or displayed this organization among their lines. They're quite many of them inside the court and this is sort of an unconventional trial in uh, general for Egypt um, but the judge generally stated a new system and new structure of procedures that will be applied since the beginning or when the trial starts in June um, there was also a lot of concerns about how um, the civil rights lawyers might enter or exit the scene specifically that the court is held at the police academy uh, which is basically a non-court friendly environment it's also it's mainly a security facility to train uh, Egyptian policemen and because of the sensitivity of the defendants and the fear of putting them in the middle uh, of Egypt's crowded cities it was much more secure to put them there but there has always been some trouble letting lawyers in and out uh, from this uh, facility. There are many challenges uh, generally in this trial. This trial uh, is um, basically concerned with the former President Hosni Mubarak, his two sons, and the former Interior Minister Habib al-Adi, six of his uh, security aides, and they are uh, accused of charges of illicit gains and abuse of power. In the same place, fewer of the same people gathered outside the court repeating their demands, either freedom or death to Mubarak. The only difference is the new panel that might bring a different end to the trial.
I am sure he is innocent. Justice will take its time. But Mubarak's innocence has already been proven and given blessings by the Egyptian people. The murderers are well known. But why else would you explain the ongoing death toll that continues after he stepped down? We want vengeance. The revolution must continue until justice is served. This judge must contribute to serve the Egyptian people who made this revolution and stood against Mubarak. Our Matias rights will only return with proper justice. It was a procedural session. The judge asked the defendants what do they plead. It was no surprise. All defendants pleaded not guilty. Yet they seemed more confident than before. And so did the civil rights lawyers. The new judge is a professional. He has a huge experience in murder cases, so I think he will be able to control this particular case. And I'm optimistic that he will accept our request to separate the illicit gains cases from the killing of protesters case, so that he would be able to concentrate on the crimes that had a death toll. For one hour, the judge has received lawyers' demands. He will declare which ones he sees relevant when the trial starts in June. Nearly 3,000 civil rights lawyers are registered in this case. Investigations are written in over 55,000 pages, what makes it the biggest trial in Egyptian history, hence the name, the trial of the century. After the delays caused by the first judge's withdrawal, the Mubarak retrial finally launches. During the next months, the judge will investigate the evidence, and by June 8th, the hearing will start. And once again, both the defendants and victims' families are hopeful that this time the trial will be in their own favor. Adel Mahrui, CCTV, Cairo. It was quiet at the police academy. The biggest numbers were only for the security forces. Maybe the second biggest group was uh, media people and uh, journalists there. Uh, victims' families were very few. Uh, most of the people attending, when you talk to them, you find them supporters to victim families rather than being victim families in themselves. On the other hand, Mubarak supporters were also very few. There's a sense in Egypt of um, many uh, are not keenly following uh, this, this session of the trial. Maybe this might change when the trial actually starts uh, in June. But generally, Egyptians uh, have not been following it quite severely as they used before when the, the trial initially started over a year ago. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Adil Mahruki, live in Cairo.